Losing weight can be very helpful for people who have sleep disorders like um, obstructive sleep apnea. They basically stop breathing repeatedly um, multiple times during the night. So this is uh, probably the best treatment if people can manage for sleep apnea. Cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia is a well-studied and well-proven method to try to improve sleep in people who suffer from various types of insomnia uh, with very high success rate. And actually there's pretty convincing evidence to show that um, the long-term effects of cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia actually surpass those of um, classical medications for sleep. Napping can actually be harmful for some people, for a lot of people with um, sleep disorders. It kind of changes our normal patterns of sleep and also the sleep pressure that we accumulate during the day. For some people who have other types of sleep disorders like sleep apnea, for example, or other types of uh, disorders that might cause uh, excessive daytime sleepiness, naps can actually be quite helpful as well. So naps, yes, but it depends for who. Wearables are an extremely fast-growing field um, with very promising applications, I think, in the, both for research and for clinical applications for sleep as well. Kids, and especially adolescents and young adults, tend to have this natural delay in their biological clock, making them physiologically always want to go to bed later and wake up later in the morning as well. Teenagers will have um, physiologically issues waking up in the morning. So if you ask them to wake up extra early and be in school and, and be functional and, and learn things efficiently, this is really not the best uh, timing for them to do so. And it's a little bit unfair. It's like if you would ask the general uh, adult to um, go to work at uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. Most of us wouldn't necessarily cope well with that um, with that type of schedule. So I believe that we uh, this is a really important issue that deserves uh, rapid action. Light can have opposite effect on the sleep-wake system depending of the time of exposure. So blue light um, can increase alertness, make us more vigilant, also suppress the sleepy hormones like melatonin, for example. Um, when it's administered um, in the morning, um, it has these positive effects and can then um, have uh, an effect whereby it can push the sleep-wake cycle a little bit earlier um, in the next um, sleeping episode. Um, but blue light before the sleep episode, so in the evening, for example, um, can then suppress your sleep hormones and prevent you from uh, getting to sleep or, or actually make it harder for you to fall to sleep. Sleeping pills uh, are still the most prevalent um, type of treatment. Um, that, that's still what gets prescribed to most people with sleep disorders um, to this day. In short term, it can be helpful, but in the longer term, we know that things like cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, which targets more of the behavior and the thoughts that maintain sleep problem, um, can, can be more helpful and sustainable in the long term.